हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ यूरिन इन द एक्सक्रीटरी सिस्टम सो दिस इज लिटरली ह्यूज टास्क दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डू फर्स्ट थिंग यू हैव टू ड्रॉ A nephron. What is a nephron? The nephrons are structural and functional units of the kidney. Each nephron consists of a cup-shaped structure known as Bowman's capsule. This is a cup-shaped structure, Bowman's capsule. Now, from the Bowman's capsule, there are these convolutions coming out from there. Now, this is the cup-shaped structure, as you can see. Inside the Bowman Bowman's capsule, we have the branches of renal artery. this is the arteriole called afferent arteriole this is afferent afferent arteriole afferent arteriole lends up into capillary network fine capillary network inside the bowman's capsule this is called glomerulus from the glomerulus another artery will goes out this is very thin one as you can see this is thick this is thin having a very narrow lumen this is glomerulus now if the question is asked what is glomerulus glomerulus is nothing but a capillary network formed by the afferent and deferent arterioles of the nephron which is present inside the bowman's capsule this is bowman's capsule now this bowman's capsule and the glomerulus together is known as malpighian body this one bowman's capsule and glomerulus together form malpighian body malpighian body look at the spelling the spelling should not be wrong so this malpighian body is one part of the nephron it is one of the major part of the nephron from the bowman's capsule these are convolutions coming out this is a convoluted tubule the other part is renal tubule which consists of this convolutions which are close to the bowman's capsule so this is called proximal convoluted tubule it is pct in short proximal convoluted tubule now from pct it comes up as a u shaped structure a hairpin like structure this whole thing from here to here this is a hairpin like structure called loop of henle loop of henle this loop of henle has thick column means here this is descending column and this is ascending column so descending limb of the loop of henle this is ascending limb of the loop of henle this is another convolutions that is far away from bowman's capsule so it is known as distal convoluted tubule tct this was proximal it was close to the bowman's capsule this is distal it is far away from bowman's capsule from here it goes to the collecting duct this is the collecting duct 
from collecting duct the urine comes out this is collecting duct hope this one is clear to you this is the structure of a nephron very easy diagram now from here from the afferent as well as efferent artery hole there are peritubular capillary networks this is peritubular capillary networks let us keep it as schematic diagram this network becomes a capillary and this wraps around the whole of loop of henle and it goes out as renal vein it forms the renal vein so this peritubular capillary network this one as well as this one is known as vasa recta peritubular capillary network this forms vasa recta so this is the whole structure this is vasa recta it is formed from afferent as well as efferent arterioles it wraps around the whole nephron the whole tubules whole kidney tubules the kidney tubules or renal tubules consists of proximal convoluted tubule loop of henle and distal convoluted tubule collecting duct a part of the collecting duct belongs to this renal tubule so now coming to mechanism of urine formation here the first process is glomerular filtration the kidney filters the equivalent of blood volume every 4.5 minutes now when the blood enters through the efferent arteriole into the glomerulus it goes out from efferent arteriole efferent arteriole has wider lumen efferent arteriole has narrower lumen so imagine blood entering into the system with a speed it goes out of it to the same speed so suppose four persons are entering into it and two persons are going out so each time two persons remain inside this so this creates a tremendous very tremendous pressure inside this this is known as hydrostatic pressure it becomes stacked up over here it, it is called hydrostatic pressure so hydrostatic pressure is caused over here around 1300 ml of blood flows past per minute filtration along the glomerulus forms an ultra filtrate in the lumen here ultra filtration takes place an ultra filtration of the blood passes through the single cell layer thick capillary units these are the single layer cell and bowman capsule has two layer cell so ultimately it passes through three layer cells inside the bowman capsule there are certain pores here there are pores and here there are cells within those cells there are pores so it passes through these pores this is known as slit pore or filtration pore so ultra filtrate passes through this pore these three layers together form a sieve like separation between the lumen of the capillary and the bowman capsule here the filtration slits are formed by the assemblages of fine cellular processes these are fine cellular processes this one this one this one this one these cells these are fine cellular processes known as podocytes these cells these are called podocytes so here there are pores through these pores it comes out these processes interdigitate so as to leave very small spaces in between these are called slit pores so first the hydrostatic pressure is created inside the glomerulus and then with tremendous force this filtrate comes out from glomerulus to the bowman capsule this is called ultra filtration because it it is coming out with tremendous pressure the glomerular filtration rate is around 125 ml per minute or about 180 liters per day in human kidneys 
So this is the ultra filtration. Hope you have come to know about it. The next process is tubular reabsorption. Maximum things come out from this ultra filtration. Means urea goes out, glucose goes out, maximum water goes out, then amino acids go out, ketone bodies go out, everything, the ions go out, almost everything comes out from here. Now imagine if the whole process ends up like this, you won't have anything remaining in your body. Whatever you have eaten, everything will go out as urine. So we have to reabsorb these things. The things that were gone out, you have to reabsorb those things. So these things are reabsorbed from this part, PCT. Water comes out again. When it passes through PCT, water comes out and goes into this peritubular capillaries. Then glucose comes out. Let's rub this one. Glucose comes out. It also passes to this. Amino acids come out. It also passes through this. Ketone bodies, some ketone bodies come out. So how much of water comes out? About 85% of water comes out through this. Reabsorbed. Because without reabsorption, we cannot allow maximum water to go out. The ions, K+, Na+, etc. These ions are very vital for our body. Cl-, HCO3-. These things are very essential for our body. They also come out through this. Now this Henle's loop. From Henle's loop also maximum water comes out. About 5 to 7% water. That also comes out from here. So this part is permeable to water. It is allowing selective reabsorption of water. Now this part, the ascending part, it does not allow water to come out. It allows only ions to come out. And it is the part where urea again enters into it. Urea enters from the collecting duct. So this is the selective reabsorption. The proximal and distal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle and the collecting duct contribute to reabsorption. Nearly all the sugars, vitamins, organic nutrients and most of the water present in the initial ultrafiltrate are reabsorbed. The third process is tubular secretion. Unlike filtration and reabsorption, it is a very, very selective process involving both passive and active transport. The filtrate travels through the nephron tubule. Substances that are transported across the tubular epithelium from the surrounding interstitial cells over here. Small molecules pass freely from the plasma within the capillaries. These are capillaries, peritubular capillaries as I told you earlier. The net effect of the renal secretion is the addition of plasma solutes to the filtrate. Now the fluid that is coming out, this one is glomerular filtrate or ultra filtrate. The ultra filtrate gets processed, reabsorbed and then with some secretions like urea, hydrogen ions, potassium ions, they land up over here and they go out as urine. Here urine is finally produced. So urine goes out from here. So I hope you enjoyed this, the process of urine formation. So now please like my channel and share to as many people as possible. Thank you so much for watching this.